Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing personal financial literacy. So the first thing we're going to review is tax tip discounts and commissions. So all of these things are usually a percentage on a certain amount of money. So there's two ways that you can calculate them. You can set up a percent proportion or to find the part that they're talking about, you can take your percent, make sure it is in decimal form and just multiply it by the whole amount to find that part. So let's look at this first one. It says the price of a TV is $499. The sales tax rate is 6%. What is the sales tax on this computer in dollars and cents? So I'm gonna set up a percent proportion for this one. I want to know out of the $499, what 6% of that is. So that's what your percent would look like. I'm trying to find 6% of 499. So now I'm going to solve this using cross multiplication. I'm gonna do six times 499 and then set it equal to X times 100, which is 100X. So I get that 2,994 is equal to 100x, and then my last step to find x is to divide by 100. And 2,994 divided by 100 would be $29.94 for the tax on that $499 TV. Okay, let's look at number two. It says an engineer has an annual income of $132,000. The income tax the engineer has to pay is 5%. What is the amount of income tax in dollars and cents that the engineer has to pay? So we could set up a percent proportion for this one, um, or we could do 132,000 times 0.05 for 5%. I'm gonna set up a percent proportion. I want to know what amount out of 132,000 is equal to 5% out of 100. So the first thing I notice that I can do here is five and 100 are both divisible by five. So I'm gonna simplify first on this one. So I get X out of 132,000 equals 100 or 5 divided by 5 is 1 and then 100 divided by 5 is 20. Okay, now I'm going to cross multiply to solve here. 1 times 132,000 is 132,000 and then x times 20 is 20x. And then my last step is to divide by 20. So to find 5% of 132,000, I will do 132,000 divided by 20. And I get that $6,600 is 5% of 132,000. Okay, next thing we're gonna talk about is monetary incentives. This is just an offer that reduces the total purchase price, such as sales, rebates, and coupons. So let's look at number three. It says two stores are having sales on computers. At store A, all computers are on sale for 20% off the original price. At store B, all computers are on sale for a fourth of the original price. Which store would have the better sale price for a computer with an original price of $950? So I'm gonna calculate the discount for both of these stores and then figure out which one has a better discount. So let's start with store A. Store A is 20% off the original price. So I wanna find 20% of 950. So I'm going to do for store A, X over 950 equals 20 over 100. 20 and 100 are both divisible by 20. So I'm going to simplify this ratio. And I get X over 950 equals 1 over 5. And I'm gonna cross multiply here to solve. One times 950 is 950. 
and x times 5 is 5x. So now I'm going to divide by 5, and 950 divided by 5 is 190. So they would get a $190 discount at store A. Now I'm going to calculate store B. Store B is one fourth off of the original price of $950. So I'm just going to do 950 divided by four for store B. Store B, the discount is $237.50. So it is definitely Store B that would have the better price because their discount is bigger. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is personal and family budgets. So to find the annual income necessary, you'll take the monthly budget and multiply by 12. So let's look at this first example. Number four, it says a monthly budget for a couple is shown. How much must the couple earn annually in order to meet this budget? So the first thing that I want to do to determine their monthly budget is add up all of their expenses. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 1400 for rent, plus 975 for food, plus 400 for transportation, plus 625 for health insurance, plus $350 for utilities, and $250 for a car payment means that their monthly budget is 4000 So they need to have at least $4,000 per month to meet this budget. But I want to know how much they are going to earn annually, which is a year, so 12 months. So I will take that $4,000 and multiply it by 12. And 4,000 times 12 is 48,000. So they would need at least $48,000 annually. Okay, the next question says, what percent of their monthly budget is spent on transportation? So we can set up a percent proportion for this. They spend $400 a month on transportation out of their $4,000 monthly budget. And we want to know what percent out of 100 that is. So the first thing I notice is that 400 and 4,000 are both divisible by 100. Actually, they're both divisible by 400. So I'm going to simplify this ratio. And I get 1 over 10 equals x over 100. And then it's easy for me to see the relationship there. 10 times 10 is 100. And 1 times 10 would get me x. So x is 10 which means that 10% of their monthly budget is spent on transportation. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is net worth. So net worth is assets, which is things that you own and um, you could like sell for more money minus your liabilities, which is things that you owe people, you're paying those back. So number five says the table shows Chandler's net worth statement. Based on the information in the statement, what is Chandler's net worth? So I need to find Chandler's assets and subtract his liabilities from his assets. So let's start by finding his assets. His assets are his house, which is $250,000 plus his checking account, which is $12,500, plus his investments, which is $54,000. So his assets are $316,500. And then we're gonna subtract his liabilities from it, which is his mortgage, what he owes on the house, which is $180,000, and his car loan of $25,000. So his liabilities, are $205,000. And now I'll subtract those things to find his net worth. So I will do 
500 minus 205,000. And I get 111 thousand dollars, 1,100 500 dollars for Chandler's net worth. Okay, last thing we're gonna look at is interest. So we have two different types of interest. The first is simple interest, which is I equals PRT. And then that finds the interest earned. And then we also have compound interest, which is A equals P times one plus R to the T. And that's gonna find the total value. And in both of these formulas, P is the principal amount, R is the rate as a decimal, and T is the time in years. So if you have those three things, you can answer the interest question. Let's look at number six. It says Jana has a loan of $25,000. The loan has a simple interest rate of 2.5% per year. Jana will pay back the loan in five years. How much interest will Jana pay on this loan? So we are talking about simple interest here. So that means we'll be using the formula I equals PRT. So let's find the principal. She took out $25,000 and then our rate as a decimal. Our rate is 2.5% and remember you can just move the decimal back twice to divide it by 100. So our rate is 0 0.025. And then the time in years is five years. So now I can find the interest that she will pay back on, these, on this loan by multiplying these things together. I'll do 25,000 times 0 0.025 times 5. So 25,000 times 0 0.025 times 5 is $3,125 in interest. Okay, our last question says, Mr. Sanchez opens a savings account with an initial deposit of $500 and will not make any additional deposits or withdrawals. How much will Mr. Sanchez have in his account at the end of two years if the account earns 10% interest compounded annually? So we're dealing with compound interest this time. So it'll be A equals P times one plus R to the T for our formula. So I'll need the same three things. I'll need the principal, which is that initial deposit of $500. I'll need the rate as a decimal. Our rate is 10%. So as a decimal, that would be 0.1. And then the time in years is two. So now I'm gonna plug this into my formula and I get 500 times one plus 0.1 to the second. 500 times one plus 0.1 to the second is $605. So that's how much he would have in his account at the end of two years.